Good afternoon and welcome to Galactic Soul Healing. My name is Sonia and I'm a transpersonal mind body art therapist. Okay, um, and today we're going to be looking at some oracle cards and we're going to be looking at the mind body connection. Okay, so um, I'll show you the cards, oracle cards. Uh, so here we have um, this is kind of like the, my uh, kind of like a feminine deck. Isis Oracle. Okay, and then we have more like the, uh, there's lots of uh, masculine images in here. So this is like a masculine deck, Gods and Titans. Now, I kind of like to um, just overlay onto this that uh, obviously with masculine and feminine or divine masculine and, and sorry, divine feminine and divine masculine, um, that uh, what we're going to be talking about today pertains to both men and women, okay, but also looking at their own divine feminine and divine masculine aspects but also overlaid in that is going to be looking to do with the mind so and this is sorry this deck here is the the cosmic tarot okay so um, basically the the spread we're going to be doing the first list the first uh, line down here which is mind okay I'm going to be taking one card from each of those three decks that's going to be them there okay one two three uh, and we're going to be talking about um, the the mind aspect of uh, feminine and masculine divine feminine and divine masculine okay um, and then we're going to be going into the body here once again one card from each deck and we're going to be talking about um, the body in terms of masculine and feminine uh, integrating together and then we're going to talk about Union. So this is also another card from each of the three decks, and it's kind of going to be looking at, um, you know, how we can bring the mind and body together, and also how we can un unify the um, feminine and masculine, because it's not that we're saying that the mind is masculine and the uh, body is feminine. Or that the mind is feminine and the body is masculine because obviously both of those mind and body pertain to feminine and masculine don't they um, just wanted to just to clarify that so let's get to shuffling um, and dealing so this is the Titan ones here and uh, Isis okay let's move that now I'll just start shuffling quickly I have sort of shuffled these a little bit um, I'm just going to do it again and um, as we're shuffling um, you know I'd like to just um, appeal to any spirit guides ascended masters um, archangels and um, you know any light beings of higher consciousness um, that would like to assist us um, with this reading both uh, for me in the imparting talking about the the cards and also for people uh, viewing to just um, you know look at the images and uh, allow them to do their work and also take in any information that may be relevant um, for you um, Okay, so this the cosmic tarot. I'm just using the major arcana. Okay, so that's the picture cards, just because they have a lot of symbology, uh, and I get that the then the numbered cards also have symbology, but it's just to kind of to keep things a little bit simpler. So that's the tarot there, uh, cosmic tarot and gods and titans. Um, yeah, and I also just like to request that any information that uh, comes through may it be imparted for the highest good of all okay so we can increase our understanding uh, and also perhaps um, assist us with our ascension process um, and also our uh, you know our own personal evolution as well as obviously enhancing our um, relationships and connections with people and with spirit in various ways so there we go 
now um, I'm just going to we're going to cut the deck uh, let's cut it three times one two three just cut those decks um, one two And one, two, three. Okay, now we'll just lie, lay them out. So we're going to be putting the Isis cards uh, first. So let's just go mind. This is the mind one, okay. And then we're going to go um, body. Actually, we'll put this one up here. Okay, and then let's put the decks there. We are going, okay, union one, oh, two three okay so we'll just pop those sticks over there now I'm not going to be changing or shifting any of these around so I've just popped the other decks over here on my counter now the remaining decks I mean okay so um, right now I'm just having a peppermint tea Beautiful for digestion, the peppermint tea. Now, um, right, so just refreshing for our spread. Okay, mind. We'll do start with this one, okay? Um, right, so we're going to be looking at all three cards together in that row, okay? So let's just go down here. And what have we got? We have Spirit of Isis. So this one is Triumph of the Goddess. It's the Spirit of Isis. Now Isis, um, I believe it's a uh, obviously a an Egyptian um, goddess figure of many things, of healing, of fertility, of uh, creativity. Um, yeah, and very spiritual, obviously. Uh, also, um, the wife of Osiris. Okay, Osiris or Osiris. Um, and that says, yeah, triumph of the goddess. Okay, so that's a very, like a very victorious card, um, that one. So let's just pull the others up and then we'll have a discussion about how they interact. Okay, there's these first row on the mind. So this one we have. Okay. Wow, we have the fall uh, and the, from the cosmic tarot. Okay, so it's almost like a childlike, uh, very childlike, and also very connected to spirit as well. That one, and it's also can be a card about sort of um, taking risks or you know leaps of faith and things like that. And let's look at this one. Oh my gosh, we have Loki. <laughs> Play. Isn't that interesting? Wow. Well, so this is pertaining all to the mind. So let's look at those three together. I'm just going to talk about them together. So we have Loki, Play. These two are very similar, aren't they? This is very childlike, and Play is almost like activating that inner child. Okay. Um, and here we have Triumph of the Goddess as well. Now. In terms of mind, it's a little bit like the spirits kind of saying that um, <laughs> mind is literally lightening up, engaging in a bit of play, like not uh, not trying to uh, let worries and things uh, and concerns completely overwhelm 
you all the time obviously there are things that you, that you could be concerned about that you need to address um, but it's kind of saying uh, alluding to play now not just for children for adults as well so it's kind of really saying um, things like doing something creative or spontaneous or um, even just you can do uh, being an art therapist I'm going to suggest you can do things like uh, if you've got a really big sand pit or you've got a, you get a box a large box a tray box and fill it with sand okay you go get yourself um, lots of little cheap little figurines from the shop little toys like you know smallish ones about that big about that high um, or you know but sort of plastic things that you can kind of put in the sand right um, and you can do a thing called sand play and it's really great like even if you're an adult you can actually just sit there with and have a, if, if you've got a really large selection of little toys it's really awesome because you can use the toys as symbols and make them symbolic of your life at the moment it's a really fun thing to do um, really activating inner child and also creativity is really good for that finger painting um, yeah, anything that um, or just painting anything creative okay now uh, triumph of the goddess um, that's almost like saying wow the feminine the divine feminine in uh, men and women okay is going to be um, more coming into mind so they're going to be more consciously aware of it and it's going to be really good okay everyone's going to be enjoying it and you know the other beautiful link here between the divine feminine and play is that it's almost like it's like that mother child nurturing type of energy okay and this is almost like a little child here as well right so it's almost saying you know if you're a mother and a father and you have a child really just kind of relax into the space do some play with them and you know different types of play you can play games you can play you know in the sandbox you could play a creative painting you could actually make some slime or make some play-doh you know make something quite sensory like objects that they can kind of you know get their hands into it's good um, you can do like clay work sculpture um, just paint some old furniture you know get some paint do some gardening you know uh, plant some new flowers in the garden some cooking um, you know make something healthy and yummy like um you know some uh, healthy smoothies or f vegetable and fruit juices stuff like that that's sort of super healthy as well okay um, so it's interesting that this is all in mind isn't it so it's almost saying like there's going to be a really in the feminine the mind of the feminine is a uh, kind of um, you know it's very it's kind of contemplative it's sort of within but it's also also intuitive okay going with the flow um, kind of being present um, and um, just really uh, loving and compassionate and healing okay so it's kind of saying that um, people will be uh, you know becoming a little more uh, aware and mindful of their divine feminine aspect okay and the divine masculine here um, is really that really beautiful that is really love beautiful and supportive of that really caring feminine energy isn't it because obviously Loki's mischievous and he might have been uh, acting in self-interest but that's not really what that's alluding to okay it's just saying that um, you know they're not saying to kind of create selfish mischief things that's only for your good and at other people's expense right what they're kind of saying what spirit's saying here is that um, you know to engage in that lighter side of life try and find a lighter side to things okay and this is literally what it's actually a direct uh, a reinforcement of this one here which is literally he's like a being of light he's almost saying you know lighten up you know, it's literally dancing in the moonlight with a little dog animals are really beautiful to actually activate that uh, feeling of play okay um, but it's also just an indication to just return to your inner child it's almost saying that of, of the divine masculine 
you know, return to your inner child, um, which is not a completely helpless state, okay, for those guys that want to be strong. It's not like saying you're going to be completely helpless. It will actually give you a lot of inner strength and inner resources if you can um, tap into your inner child, okay. It will help your um, mental health and well-being, ultimately. It will help your relationships too, you know, like if you have a partner and children, it will help that. Okay. Um, yeah, often doing inner child work can actually really empower your parenting, but also really help you in relationships. I kid you not. And also increases self-understanding of yourself too. <sighs> Which helps with raising our frequency into self-love. Okay, um, all of this are really beautiful uh, raising frequencies, and this is what's going to be. Sorry, that's a bit low there. Uh, this is kind of what's going to be happening. Um, you know, I for, sorry, I forgot to say this is kind of for the next few months. You know, um, between now and Christmas or something like that, or might even be between now, for the next, you know, a couple of months or something like that. Um, yeah, so that's really beautiful for mind. Okay, so like lighten up, do some play, kind of just um, take a lot of that uh, pressure off of the um, the cognitive mind and allow that subconscious sensory mind to just kind of try and activate and have a bit more of a voice, particularly your own inner, sh inner child which is held within your psyche. Okay, and also of course we have the, the divine feminine in men and women. <sighs> And it says it's a triumph here, so that um, that's going to be really activated and uh, integrated in a nice way, because this is also um, almost a spiritual card here. It's like it's you know un one with spirit, okay. And the fact that all these are together, it's sort of really quite good, really beautiful actually. Um, I just really love how Loki's there as well. That's awesome. So I'll just show those again. And then we can flick back to these uh, again. Now, so of course you saw me deal these out. I haven't put those there uh, in any premeditated way, okay? No selecting of specific cards to put in those positions is what I'm saying. Okay, now, the next one is body. Okay, let's have a look, just so you can see as we turn over, and then we'll pick them up together. Um, now we have, um, wow, we have Ra, he's of course an Egyptian god, Ra, and that is power. That is the, um, you know, the all-powerful sun god of the, in Egyptian um cosmology and belief system um yep awesome now we have strength wow isn't that fascinating look how oh this is amazing power and strength are together wow i think this is really uh going to be interesting now what have we got here that is the, sorry I can't read it backwards, the Lunar Queen, she of the Celestial Crescent. Wow, the Lunar Queen. So that's quite a powerful feminine uh, image there. The Lunar Queen, and here we have Ra, it's literally the Sun God and the Moon Goddess. Can you believe it folks? Oh my God. And what do we have in here? Strength. Let's pick those up and have a look. This is body, folks. Ooh. This is amazing. Wow. You know, we've just had the, you know, the spirit of Isis and Loki with the play, just a beautiful, really soft energy with regard to the mind. Okay, what we need to be focusing on with the mind. Now, with the body... It's kind of saying here that uh, 
it's actually going to be good to develop our strength and I think they're actually referring to physical strength now they're kind of saying not in a way of overboard but just in balance and progressively and you know with um, just integrating it into your lifestyle just try and do some strength work okay um, which might just mean going to buy some dumbbells and just googling some resistant training techniques resistance training techniques that you can do just either free body or with dumbbells or whatever on YouTube you can research that or you can go to a gym but you do have to be um, gentle on yourself if you're building up your strength you know just condition yourself gradually don't hit it like a bull at a gate um, because if you do that you'll probably just end up with a physio or the chiro and uh, yeah don't want to injure yourself so the strength and the power and here we have the lunar celestial shoe of the celestial crescent so what, the, what I'm gathering from that is that really in terms of um, just overall having studied personal training and I am a qualified personal trainer um, in terms of the physical body and things like posture um, the chakras within us you know our muscular skeletal system okay it's really saying to strengthen all aspects of the physical body if you can because that's that's what will help you with this with power and uh, I'm also I'm going to add in here um, spirituality it will help you to develop your connections um, yeah, which we'll go into in union but um, it's really saying to strengthen your now strengthen your divine masculine aspects and also strengthen your divine feminine aspects okay um, both of those have implications for the physical so if you're a d divine feminine basically to develop the strength there for the divine feminine is um, sort of really about being strong on it's almost about being strong on the self-care and the nutrition that you're taking in because it's a very feminine this thing where we take stuff in and we're receptive okay um, is, is sort of about uh, you know it's about a little bit of discipline a little bit of care about putting nutritional things in as opposed to non-nutritional and we're talking food you know uh, cigarettes uh, alcohol um, any type of drugs um, you know uh, fluids like hydration so this is sort of saying in order to kind of be strong throughout your physical the nutrition that you're taking in needs to be really good and the other thing that physically you can do for the divine feminine that's really good is to learn how to do mind body rela relaxation um, just take in some music and really relax focus inwards on the breath so we're we're talking about the receptive divine feminine energy nutrition what you're taking in try and be as helpful as possible and um, when you're relaxing focusing in even on the chakras in the body doing some chakra work and uh, you know things like yoga Tai Chi where you've got where it's a very internal meditative way to use your physical body which is the topic we're on that will help you to really relax and come into one and that's good for men and women to do okay um, any of that stuff I've just said and uh, so with the divine masculine okay in terms of the physical so we're talking about <clears throat> first of all we're talking about being strong with those feminine things okay now with Ra that's I think that's more about action so if you do an action 
for instance. Like, let me just say a little thing here. For instance, if you're doing deep relaxation, okay, that's not actually working your heart muscle, as in terms of cardiovascularly speaking. Okay, but if you go for a walk or a long hike or a bike ride or doing stuff in the garden or, um, you know, you're at the gym on the treadmill or something like that, that's kind of going to be exercising your heart muscle, but it requires to move your, it requires you to put your body into action because you have to move it in order to get the heart pumping, okay? A lot of the divine feminine stuff is actually done in stillness, but it can still be related to physical strength okay because it's it helps you to become stronger within your whole physical form and this is a real challenge this is why I really wanted to focus on mind body connection okay because we are being asked to uh, accept that we have physical form and to also master it as much as we can um, so the other thing so exercising your heart muscle okay the other thing uh, is with the bones right to exercise them and do weight lifting or to walk actually helps the uh, the uh, it bone density that's what I'm trying to say okay and it also um, when we move our body into action which is what this is I believe talking about and also it's God of the Sun so it's like stuff you can do in the day outside in nature this is you know the lunar queen at night we you know when you're home making a meal do a good job of it and just make sure you know you might want to do relaxation at night stuff like that so it's almost like activate your divine masculine in the day to improve your strength and the, the feminine it may be more in the evening or throughout the day in little bits to activate it too so here we have the cardiovascular right we also have the bones so we need to move our bones or we need to lift things okay in order to uh, generate the bone density and the other thing of course is the muscles okay now the muscular system is basically linked into everything the other thing I'm going to mention here is posture okay and this is all to do with divine masculine I believe because it's to do with physical action so we can't we're not necessarily going to build resistance by lying on the ground as in divine feminine okay we're not going to build strength but there's many huge benefits to be gained from activating the divine feminine with regard to your physical body here okay we're talking about muscular system it really links into the posture so and that also links into the chakras which is the feminine aspect of the physical body because it's the inner okay uh, the masculine the divine masculine is more about the outer um, but bones is inner, I get that. Um, but it's more also about that thing about action. Okay, we have to we have to move our bodies in order to improve the strength of the cardiovascular system, the muscular system, and the um, I guess it's the skeletal system, isn't it? But also there's things like um, uh, did I say respiratory? Yeah, cardiovascular is the respiratory as well. So it helps your oxygen uptake. The other thing that when we move our bodies in the action, it it can help with endorphins. And also if we're doing deep relaxation, that can also produce endorphins as well, which is the feel-good hormone, which is kind of probably what we want, don't we? A bit more of that. So the muscles, for instance, affect posture, which can affect breathing. Okay, which can also affect inner organ health. So for instance, if you're quite a sedentary person, you have a very sedentary job, um, you might want to look at strengthening your back, your glutes, which is your bum muscles, and your um, legs possibly, but also stretching out your hip flexors. Like a personal trainer will be able to, you know, take you through all of that. If you just say, look, uh, I'm sedentary, and um, I'd really like to do some posture correction work, and also... Um, just kind of strengthen my body the back of my body because that's where I haven't been activating it right or something like that but um, in a sense they're saying you know it's going to be really good uh, to develop strength there's a lot more to the physical body um, than just meets the eye okay because it's not just the outward appearance is it it's all the organs inside 
okay and all the muscles that help the posture that allow the organs to work properly and not only that's the nutrition that we put in okay all those chemicals that we're taking in to the physical form okay uh, affect the form and the organs and all sorts of things and also it can also affect the mind but anyway that's going into the next thing isn't it but you know this is really awesome that's just amazing I cannot believe how that's in there like you know and there's probably some other symbology there that you can pick out um, this line here this is also a very um, line beings are Syrian and I think Andromedan as well in terms of if you're looking into galactic stuff galactic um, consciousnesses and the Egyptian uh, whole thing about the Egyptian oh my god I've just realized these are two separate decks aren't they this is gods and titans and this is um, so it's almost saying this is like a full uh, reinforcement statement of the fact that a lot of these beings that come from Sirius and they actually really assist people with their physical bodies so if you are having trouble with your body your physical health or whatever you know um, you might want to do some meditation and um, really contact the beings on Sirius because this is where all these guys hang out and you know lines on Sirius as well awesome um, wow that's just very reinforcing of, of, of the ancient Egyptian culture and the in terms of the support that those god type figures that are now in high frequency you know they have been for a long long time um, that basically we can telepathically tap into them it's just amazing but the other thing too I just wanted to say here um, is that with Loki Loki of course is a Norse god you don't want to tap into the thing about being mischief and being you know selfish and you know all that sort of stuff but you might be able to um, you know just tap into the whole Norse mythology thing to just kind of really help with that play you know which is that was the mind thing we just looked at on this side there <laughs> uh, that boards a bit way back um, so now we're going to do union <sighs> now this is how the mind and the body come together so isn't that interesting we need to kind of just build up our strength a bit now that's not to say that all men and women have to become full bodybuilders that's not what we're saying it's just being strong in yourself and adding a little if you have no muscle tone adding a little bit of muscle tone if you can okay because it will help everything now um, right this is about union okay let me see what that says talismans of potency charging sacred objects of power okay right I'm gonna have something to I mean what comes to my mind first of all there is crystals okay um, but um, yeah I'm gonna have a chat about that in a minute now which I think is definitely relevant in union this one we have is temperance <sighs> that is amazing you know temperance is that whole thing about um, uh, being gradual and being respectful okay that's really awesome we'll elaborate on that in a minute in a minute and this one we have wow harp Apuk. and that is fear can you believe it that is fascinating this is all about union folks okay we're going to pick those up and have a little chit chat because they are some serious cards I tell you they are serious uh, Apuk, I believe, is a um, a Mayan god type figure from the underworld, and apparently, uh, 
actually really comes after people like really um like i think the mayans i think it's mayans or yeah they have all these different layers of the underworld and apparently he's at the bottommost layer and he's actually really um like basically people that have a death wish he's like they're egging them on that kind of thing or anyway this that was their that's their mythology right um but i think what it's trying to say here is that um basically it's could be saying a few things let's just look at them overall first i just feel like i've got to just touch on them a little bit before we kind of just uh have a conclusion um as to what it means as a whole okay talismans of potency charging sacred objects of power now she's wearing a head piece earrings a necklace and things in her hair and obviously um so in terms of union mind body okay for instance if you're wearing a talisman on your body okay which is that could be some type of crystal and you could actually do a whole lot of research on crystal healing because certain types of crystals help certain types of chakras certain chakras okay um, and it's sort of alluding to the fact that that can actually assist you in your mind body connection your mind body union coming together um, talismans yeah so um, a talisman is an object isn't it so it might be something that you wear that that's what I that's what I would be taking from that is that um, it's some object that either you are uh, maybe you put in your purse that you wear on your person okay um, or it could be like certain types of earrings or necklace or bracelet or um, a watch even um, you know a friendship band something that you've made that has deep meaning you know okay you're wearing it on your body as a reminder um, so it's a little bit like ritualistic and it's a little bit like creative so it might be something that you've made or something that you've bought like a you know a special crystal um, for instance you know like the carnelian stone is actually uh, really good for people that are helping to activate and regulate their sacral chakra and there's other stones for different um, chakras which I won't go through now but um, you know you can go to a crystal shop or online have a look um, and you know uh, crystals that the Egyptians used were um, uh, black obsidian lapis lazuli they have carnelian and they have um, turquoise you know there's quite a few um, that they used as well um, so sorry the GI um, so they're kind of also saying that while the object might also might have an energetic quality about it that can help your physical okay it could also have meaning that you have imbued upon it with your mind so it could be that okay um, you've made yourself a little uh, wristband of certain colors that you like and particular things to remind you that you know say you wanted to change your nutritional habits right it might be that you have green there for more green vegetables and you might have all the colors of the rainbow so you reminds you to eat fruit and vegetables and things like that so that might be you know you wear it as a reminder and sometimes when we do that stuff for our our subconscious it really helps us it can actually help us to change our behavior so the talismans of potency are actually visual objects or things that you wear that can also have meaning that you have imbued upon it, upon them and also that if especially if you've cre if you've made them okay they can have a lot of meaning for you um, but they also do actually appeal to the subconscious and they will help you to perhaps change habits or shift your behaviors so that you can really support your body as it goes into more strength inwardly and outwardly okay in terms of physical outward appearance and inner inner body um, okay and um, and this is just a beautiful example of play so it might be that as a form of your play that you make yourself a little talisman or something that you're going to wear or put in your purse or your handbag or your um, your gym bag or whatever or your bike pack whatever it is that you take um, 
that's just kind of a bit of a reminder for you. You know, it might even be that you uh, <coughs> go out and buy yourself a new pair of sneakers and just put a you know a little design on the bottom on that white bit there with the black texture. Just kind of do a little Aztec thing. And it might be like, yeah, cool, I'm just getting into my tribal zone now. Just getting connected to Earth and I'm going to go out and do my soul connection, Earth connection, walk, jog, hike, whatever it is. There's lots of ways to kind of bring meaning into uh, helping you to get your strength and you're activating your physical body as well as um, bringing in that mind aspect. Okay, um, so that's that one. And the temperance is really doing it with care and self-love. It's really making this, doing these things for yourself, making these talismans uh, with self-care in mind. And it's also saying don't have to go completely overboard with it. Okay, just saying do a few things. Um, <clears throat> and also, that's also uh, uh, a, an image of um, nature connection. And that really does help to unify your mind and your body because it's very activating for your soul to go out into nature because what happens is that if you're surrounded by nature it's more conducive to you actually going into your own natural state which is your light self which is your self your higher self where your mind and body are one okay this is why people find going out in nature or going for walks and stuff on the beach, whatever, very relaxing. Because it's literally relaxing their mind and just gently activating the body so that they can kind of come together in a nice dynamic, dynamic uh, synchronous way. Okay. Um, you know, and she probably went for a bit of a walk before she got there. You know. Go for a walk. Now, <coughs> our pook, fear. Now, what he said, what I think he's alluding to, is the uh, the deep subconscious blocks that may be preventing the union from occurring. And I think what it's saying is that some, in some ways, deep fear needs to be uh, addressed. Um, kind of in a mindful way in an ongoing way okay because uh, people have actually undergone a lot of uh, West well a lot of civilization uh, community cultural groups have undergone a type of mind body split and basically this mind body union connection back again it's actually going to actually really activate people's uh, into their full soul power now the fear around that is going to be simply all of those little uh, defense mechanisms that come in that attempt to sabotage people's efforts in that direction. So basically if you're trying to bring your mind and body into one, okay, um, there might be a whole lot of reasons why that's really, really hard for you. And this spread is sort of saying that this uh, deep-seated fears, perhaps phobias, perhaps um, pain programs that have caused you to push aspects of yourself into your subconscious. In other words, you've been you've partly repressed stuff. There's a lot of fear about bringing that stuff forward. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so it's really kind of saying that if you're having that or you feel like you have that fear it's really to exercise some temperance which is self-love some moderation maybe acknowledge um, the, the fears or the pain programs that you had perhaps back when you were a child okay and um, do some uh, address it with care not saying avoid it it's saying it does need to be addressed gradually and I'm going to suggest ther a therapy counseling try and find a good one even online there's some um, and um, also doing something creative making little talismans for yourself 
okay if you even if you identify a fear or a phobia or a uh, you know it can come from even if you're addicted to something right now addicted to a substance or whatever okay that addiction that you have could well be uh, an attempt by your psyche to actually cover over a part of your a, an aspect of your mind or something that's happened that you don't really want to look at and this is where the fear comes in because I get that it's, it is a scary thing to actually look at your own uh, sabotaging stuff so isn't that interesting how they're saying like in with union in an attempt to get your mind and body to work harmoniously together there is going to be resistance and the thing is it's not necessarily going to be stuff that's been that you're dealing with now it may have been stuff that that was planted in your psyche that you took on as a child unknowingly you took it on okay um, and it's sort of built up to the point where now your mind and body are not working harmoniously together but yet you also have a lot of fear about going in and addressing that which is totally normal and totally understandable but it's saying here exercise some temperance okay and I'm also going to say here talismans of potency is also almost about activating a spiritual connection if you can um, which will help you to kind of strengthen you if you can kind of somehow research spirit guides and just find some that you resonate with because um, sometimes when you're going through deep stuff like um, grief or letting go of stuff or realizing things about yourself um, it's really it is nice to have a couple of really good strong spirit guides because when you do meditations you can visualize them there with you as you're going through it and some of them are really strong uh, I do recommend the um, serious uh, sorry the um, the the Egyptian gods system the Egyptian gods all of these uh, these particular um, entities that have come from Sirius uh, that came from Sirius down to earth are hardcore really strong spirit guides okay you might I mean you might not resonate so much with with angelic protection or you might but I guess my suggestion is if you're not if you don't resonate with uh, say angels or ascended masters okay um, just try and look into some of the um, Egyptian God system uh, Egyptian God cosmology mythology okay I mean you probably guess by now um, you know I've had one or two really strong spirit guides from the ancient Egyptian um, pantheon I'm not not going to go into detail um, but yeah so it's interesting isn't it because um, it's potency there's talismans so it's sort of saying this is this is a really good strength a strong way it's not just spirit guides here here they're talking about and not just objects it's also spirit guides I think because that's really going to help in your union and help you to overcome this apuk we don't want too much apuk happening if we can help it but I get that it's there you know um, and uh, you know it's mostly in deep subconscious and it's not that you you know if you've got you feel like you've got this top of energies that's keep sabotaging you it's not like it's overpowering you okay it's just that this is an archetypal image of you know a type of uh, negative energy really okay that that's an unhelpful energy right so these you know obviously temperance is going to be helpful and this one's going to be helpful okay in in terms of unity mind body unity for men and women okay now just because that's a male doesn't mean that the what well, I'm trying to I'm not trying to say that the, the men are fear producing no um, I actually give credit to this stack because of this uh, negative energy one that's in there because it's still relevant right uh, this pack also has uh, a couple of uh, dark energy cards in there um, which is totally relevant because people still got to overcome that dark energy negative energy okay so this is it 
Um, if you want to take a screenshot, I don't know whether that's uh, actually yeah. Let's do that. Um, now, in terms of um, the beautiful interaction here, isn't it? This is like the really the mind. It's almost like there's going to be a whole lightning of the mind happening. There's going to be some play, uh, and we're going to have the, the the divine feminine coming through, and it's going to be harmonious. Okay, because this is. Uh, a quite happy joyous card this one as well this one too with the body is strength and we had you know very the inward divine feminine with the the lunar goddess here and then we have the sun god Ra which is the very um, of course the divine masculine aspect that's feeding into our strength here to do with our inner body and our external body um, and then we have here, this is actually a very spiritual card, talismans of potency, like we said before. It can be an object or even something that you wear, a piece of clothing even, or shoes or um, yeah, a headpiece, anything that you either create or you've purchased that has meaning for you. And uh, of course crystals um, can be of assistance there because they often have an energetic frequency. Just uh, keep in mind that if you do get crystals that it is important to wash them in running water to kind of clear their energy, okay? Um, and you can actually research that, how to cleanse crystals. And just to keep in mind that, uh, yeah, our pook here is um, really just those obstacles and barriers that are going to be, that will need to be dealt with in order to acquire or obtain mind body unity or a more of a mind body unity state okay um, and yeah I think that has covered it um, yeah so thank you for watching and I hope that was useful so in terms of um yeah I'm glad spirit just uh, guided me to do that just been on a mind body thing uh, now lately and um, yeah we'll leave it at that don't forget the thing about the uh, serious the Egyptian uh, pantheon of gods if you feel that you resonate with any one or two of those um, look into it and um, you can actually call on them and they'll help you honestly see ya